Let's explore compound microscopes. We'll first understand the logic behind it, and then we'll build it. So let's say you are looking at a tiny amoeba with your naked eye. Well, imagine this is your eye and your cornea and your eyelids are together over here. It's a schematic, okay? Now, how big this amoeba looks to you really depends on the size of the image formed in your retina. And that depends on this angle, which is the same as this angle. This angle, we'll call that as theta naught. And if the angle theta naught is small enough, which is, which is the case in the case of an amoeba, then we can approximate that angle as being equal to this height h divided by this distance d. Now for the case of amoeba, this angle is very tiny because amoeba's size is very small, making this height extremely tiny. And for the naked eye, we cannot come any closer than about 25 centimeters, that's our near point. And as a result, this angle becomes very small, and so this size in the retina becomes very small, so we can't see it clearly. Now in order to magnify this image, we somehow have to increase the size in the retina. Now, the question is, how do we do that? So we have to increase this angle, right? So how do you increase that angle theta naught? Let's first, just let's look at it mathematically. How do you increase the value of theta naught? Well, we can do two things. One, we can somehow increase the height of the amoeba itself. If you could somehow, let's say, stretch that amoeba and make it, say, 10 times bigger, then I'm pretty sure you agree with me that even this angle would become 10 times bigger, making this size in the retina also 10 times bigger. Another thing we could do is decrease this value of d. So decrease this, which means if you could go closer, then also theta naught would increase. Suppose we could go about 10 times closer, let's say, than the near point. Of course, uh, with a naked eye, it's going to be absolutely blurred, but somehow if we solve that problem of blurring, and if you could go 10 times closer, then again, theta naught will increase again by a factor of 10, which means there'll be a total increase of a factor of 100, can you see that? 100 times more, this size will be in our retina now. And guess what? That's exactly what a compound microscope does. So our compound microscope does two things. One, it stretches the height or the size of the object. That's one stage of magnification. The second stage is it allows your eye to go much closer than your near point, giving you a second stage of magnification, together giving you a huge magnification. So all we need to figure out is how do we practically build something that does this and this. All right, let's make some space to build our microscope. So let me keep this thing down somewhere over here. I want this for our reference. This is what we're seeing with the naked eye. And let's minimize this. Excellent. So first step is to increase the size of the amoeba, say about 10 times as an example. How do we stretch this amoeba and make it 10 times larger? Well, actually, you already know how to do that. So say you had a, you had a convex lens with you. And say you kept that same object somewhere between f and 2f, say very close to f, but in between f and 2f. Now if you draw the rays, we can clearly see that the topmost point is being focused somewhere over here, the bottom will get so focused somewhere over there, which means you're going to end up with a huge magnified image, an inverted real image like this. Now, the closer you bring this object to the principal focus, you will see if you draw the ray diagrams, the bigger this will be. So by choosing a suitable distance over here, we can make this image about, about 10 times h if you wanted. So you can do that. So we have received the first stage of magnification. We can treat this now as our new object. Even without the second stage, say you were to directly look at this. Just like how you would look at this object, say you would directly look at this by bringing this point right at your near point, can you see now this object, this image is going to subtend about 10 times bigger angle over here. It's going to subtend 10 times bigger. And as a result, if you draw a reference ray through the optic center, notice that the image size inside your retina is already 10 times as big as you got over here. That's why we have achieved the first stage of magnification. Now one small detail is you may be wondering, well the rays of light are coming down over here, right? So how could you see it over here? Well in reality, remember, these angles are extremely tiny. So all these rays are pretty much parallel to the principal axis, all right? So we have exaggerated over here. But what's important is already with the first stage, we have gotten 10 times bigger image in our retina. But we're not gonna stop over here. Oh no, no, we need to make it even bigger. To increase this angle even more, we are going to do the second stage of magnification. The second stage, we are going to go closer. And in our example, uh, we are going to go about 10 times closer. 
So the current distance is about 25 centimeters, that's our near point, which means to go 10 times closer, I have to bring my eye about 2.5 centimeters from this image. But how do we do that? Because if we do it right now with our naked eye, then the rays of light will not be focused on our retina. It'll be a blurred image. So we are going to make use of a convex lens. We are going to get help from a convex lens. In fact, you know what? Let's bring in a convex lens which has a focal length of exactly 2.5 centimeters. And now with the help of this convex lens, we can bring this entire system, our eye and the lens, all the way till here so that the object, the new object for us, it's actually the image, so I'm talking about this image, which is the object for us, that comes right at the principal focus. Because when it comes at the principal focus, what's going to happen is that these rays of light are going to be parallel to each other. And now, our eyes are, can focus these parallel beam of light on the retina. Now, as a result, can you see that the new angle subtended is about 10 times larger? Let me just show that. There it is. Notice now the angle subtended is further 10 times bigger and the rays of light after refraction are pretty much parallel to each other. Again, these rays of light will fall on our eyes because uh, these rays are pretty much parallel. We've exaggerated over here. And as a result, they will all get focused at this point now. So this, this point will get focused at this point and as a result, our image now is going to be humongous, further 10 times bigger. So the image size has increased further 10 times, which means compared to this, what we had before, the image has increased 100 times more. We have, we have achieved 100 times magnification. And so this is what our compound microscope looks like. Now before we continue any further, a small thing. This second stage of magnification we got by bringing a convex lens right next to your eye and coming closer, this is actually the principle of a simple microscope. So this lens is just acting like a simple microscope. And we've talked a lot about this in previous videos in great detail. So if this part was not super clear to you or you need more clarity on this, the second part where we went closer, then it would be a great idea to go back and watch those videos and then come back over here here. Anyways, we can see that our microscope consists of two lenses, one to achieve this and another one to achieve this. And we give na names to these lenses. The one that is close to the object, we call that as the objective. So this lens we often call as objective. So the purpose of the objective is to create a large magnified image. And this lens which is kept close to our eye, which acts like a simple microscope, is called the eyepiece. Again, it's called eyepiece because it's kept very close to our eye. And its job is to do this. Let me show you this in reality. So here I have drawn a tiny amoeba on my computer screen. And with my naked eye, this is what I'm seeing right now. That's it. Now to increase the size, we need to magnify this. So we're gonna build a compound microscope. So first stage of magnification will be by using an objective lens. And here you can see I'm using an objective lens over here. So this is going to create a real image. It's a convex lens. It's going to create a real image. And so if I look at that again directly with my naked eye, I have to look from here somewhere. And if I look directly from my naked eye, this is what I pretty much see. This is the first stage of magnification. And if we compare it to what we had before, you can clearly see it's a little bit magnified. It's a little bit, it's not 10 times. It's a little bit because I'm not having a perfect lens over here, all right? So anyways, you can see it's magnified. First stage of magnification. Now to further magnify this, we are going to use our eyepiece, which is just a magnifying glass, a simple microscope. If we now bring this magnifying glass right next to our eye, we can go even closer and get that image even bigger in our retina. This is the final image, a little bit more magnified. Again, not much because again, we don't have perfect lens system over here. And now we have simulated our compound microscope. So the final setup looks pretty much like this. Here's our objective, here's our eyepiece, and this is our compound microscope. In fact, it's called compound because it's made up of two lenses. Now lastly, we'll look very quickly, look at the magnification produced by our compound microscope. In our example, we got it to be 100 ticks, right? We got we found that with the microscope, the image in the retina is 100 times more than we get without the microscope. How did we get that 100? Well, 10 was produced by the objective, and further 10 was produced by the eyepiece. So it's the product. So in general, we can write the magnification produced is the magnification of the objective 
times the magnification of the eyepiece. This in simple is the total magnification of a compound microscope.